Only players that did not make the playoffs last NHL season are eligible for today's draft. I'm honestly amazed that we as a whole are still coming up with draft ideas this far into the game, but here we are. I actually did want to do a NHL 24 reveal reaction, I guess you could say, but I was working on the setup at the time, so I didn't really have anything good. So that is why I didn't, but... Yeah, we're on NHL 23 for now. Hopefully I can get some NHL 24 stuff whenever the next increment, I don't know, whatever they do, drops. It could be like online features. I know they do like a bunch of different breakdowns. So let's find out what team we are drafting for. It is boom, the Montreal Canadiens. I'm down. No owner mode, no jabroni, no fog of war, but we will have fantasy draft on. Eh, I won't deal with player morale either. I for one, think we're going to be drafting at pick number 18. Just putting that out there and I am wrong because we are pick 25. I feel like we've been getting a lot of late picks recently other than the literal opposite of this draft where I believe we picked at number six. The Penguins did not make the playoffs so that is quite tempting. However, I will be going with Quinn Hughes. The Capitals also did not make the playoffs. However, you can call me insane and you're probably right, but I want to pair these two defensemen together just to see what happens. The Mighty Ducks, not in the lofts, and he's making 1.4 at 87 overall. Three abilities. You've got to go with Troy Terry here. Kata Hat could be our starting goalie. I think that is very tempting. Yeah, let's just go for it. We've got two stud defensemen playing together. We've got a good goalie. We don't even need offense at this point. Kadri was playoffless. He's got a gold. Like, I don't know if this is from the custom roster I got, because obviously I wanted to try and get more up-to-date stuff. Either way, I'm drafting him. Ludicrous contract. But I want a sniper for the left wing spot on that first line, because right now we have two two-way forwards. So let's go with Jeff Skinner. Let's take a former capital, as is evident by the jersey he's wearing in that picture. Verona will be joining our roster. This is in no way a cap-friendly selection here at 6.5, but I'm still going to send it. Going to be slim pickings later on in the draft, but whatever. We'll deal with that when we get there. This is genuinely just starting to feel like the two-way draft, but Connor Brown will also be joining our team. Continuing on the two-way forward trend, we're going with Novak to be probably our second line center. Could be third, I guess. You never know. 31 million of cap space. Yeah, you know what, I'm still going to try to do some damage control before we get to an unrecoverable spot. So I'm going to go with Barabanov. He's a playmaker. So we got that going. And I am breaking the cap-friendly trend to go for Victor Olofsson. Left-wing sniper. Sign him up. A relatively cap-friendly pick here. 82 overall, 2.5 million. Yeah, let's do it. And then he'll finish up our top four, I guess. No playoffs for Shiri, but a great 1.5 deal. So you will be our newest member. Probably a decent idea to get a goalie so that we have our duo ready to rumble. I'm going to go with Casey or Cassie DeSmith. Can I just call him Casserole? No? Okay. Sure, why not? Two-way forward, Blake Coleman. Joining the Montreal Canadiens. So we have about 13.7 to draft two forwards and two defensemen. Very, very doable. Jan Ruda was a Pittsburgh Penguin for last season. Defensive defenseman. I think that's pretty good. 2.7 is reasonable. Okay, so we just need a left-handed defender now, I think. Yeah, so Jensen's going to be playing with Fowler. And then we have Ruda. Okay, so correct. A left-handed defenseman. Let us proceed with Radim. He is a two-way defender, which is good. I don't really want to pair two defensive defensemen together. Yeah. Our decor is done. Only 74 face-offs, but what can you do? I can draft them, and I shall. That felt like I was doing poetry. I don't know what just happened right there, but we're gonna roll with it. And with the final selection of the draft, we will be bringing back home Josh Anderson. 28 years of age, 5.5 million, brings us right near the cap. Boom, we're done. What do we have here? Quinn Hughes and John Carlson is our first two picks. That is interesting. I have no idea what this team is gonna play like, 
but I'll tell you one thing for free, I am extremely interested to find out. As we do, let's go put the lines together and see what this squad looks like on Papier. Here we go. Edit line, show me the chemistry. At least a little bit. Zeros is okay. At least it's not in the dash. If I move Barabanov up, that gets a plus one. I think I'm going to do that and have a really good third line. Also, Connor Brown is a two-way forward and Barabanov is a playmaker. So we got playmaker, two-way forward, sniper. And then here we just have sniper with two two-way forwards. But what can you do? I think for the sake of chemistry, we're going to have a fourth line sniper. Sorry, Olafson. I mean, our ice time allocation is roll four lines anyway, so we should be chilling. Let's go to goalies first because they don't have chemistry. And I'm honestly a little bit nervous to see the defenseman. Okay, here we go. Face your fears. Boom. What an absolute thing of beauty that is. These guys better put up like literally 105 points each. I really want to say we're going to be good, but there's a part of me that just doesn't feel like that's true. But I'm going to fight that and I'm going to say we do make the playoffs with 43 wins. And I'm going to say, honestly, one of these two is getting the most points. I'm going to say Quinn Hughes leads the team with like 78 points. I don't think we're going to get a lot but we're going to be pretty good defensively. Let's do this. Great start. Okay. We are 3-1-0. Don't do it. Thank you. We had a bit of a reality check early on there, but the boys snapped back and look at us go now. Wow. All right. We're doing really well. I did put up some soundproofing, so hopefully the echo is a little bit better. It does sound a little bit better, but that also could just be because I have headphones on. And unfortunately, the lights that I ordered from behind me, the hex lights are not going to be here until later today. So yeah. And I couldn't wait to record this video because I won't have time later today. So instead I record at quarter to six in the morning. The grind. Ooh, Khalil. Let's check it out. He's an A minus, whereas our coach is an A. He's got a nice team fit. Wow, that's going to be hard to beat, I feel like. What does our coach have currently? He's got, ah, whatever, I'll leave it. I need you guys to go on a tear. Right up till this trade deadline here. I want 34 wins by the trade deadline. I think that is extremely valid. You know, I don't think I'm asking for too much here. Yeah, no, we're going to do it. Absolutely. We might even exceed expectations or maybe I gave them a little too much credit we did love that from you I'm not making any moves because we're buzzing honestly I would have considered maybe taking Patrick Kane simply for the fact that he is 90 overall but he was in the playoffs so I can't anyway all right fine I'll take a look at JT Miller he could be good for that first line but again we do have a sniper on the first line right now and he's another two-way forward i really don't want to give up too much i don't think this is going to happen in fact i feel like it's going to be not even close they might be insulted but i'm going to try vrana uh this year second and next year third propose the trade yeah maybe i'll try next year second and that's as far as i'm going because i don't want to overstretch here it is a fantasy draft after all boom yeah okay i'm Done. That's it. I tried. JT Miller and JVR went to Nashville, or should I say Smashville, in exchange for... This is the second time we've seen Savoie traded at the deadline for a second and a third as well. Okay. All right. Patrick Kane and Jake Gardner headed to the Golden Knights in exchange for Edvinson, Gocher, Gosher, and a sixth. How are we fifth in the division with 35 wins at the trade deadline? I feel like there's going to be some absurd team making the playoffs. But anyway, just a half-decent post-trade deadline. And I'm hoping we should be okay. Another coach has been canned. Not even going to look. I liked our coach. He was an A. And his team fit was really good. The lads have exceeded expectations again. I said 43 wins and here they are ripping it up. In fact, 50 is plausible if we win these next two games. Oh my gosh, 49 wins. That's still insane. We finished third in the division with 104 points. Tampa had 103. The Atlantic just stacked this year. The Flyers, however, would be President's Trophy winners. They had Line, Seb, and Robertson. That is an insane first line. They got Lindell and Hronik. Dubois, Hoffman, and Parise. I feel like it's just their first line and their first defensive pair that carried them. The ninth place Boston Bruins do not qualify for the playoffs. Things you absolutely hate to see. 
And who made it in? Okay, so we got the 23rd Minnesota Wild that finished with a record of 37, 35, and 10. I mean, we've seen 26 now, so 23 isn't that crazy, but that's still crazy. It would be the Canucks coming in last place. They had 58 points. Let's see here. Chandler, Eberle, and Kachuk. Kachekov and Nett, Charlie Mack as their stud defenseman. They also got Drysdale, Perfetti. Okay, they got some good pieces for the future, so that's probably the draft that they went for. Nas led the team with 72 points. Great number. And he had 31 tucks as well. That is good. Hughes had a nice amount of points. Vrana had 62. Same with Skinner. Let's go, Vrana. He wasn't even on the first line. Kata. He did pretty good. Four shutouts, a 9-10 save percentage, 40 wins on the year. DeSmith, not the greatest save percentage, but still won games. Leonard had the most wins with 43. However, he had a sub-900 save percentage. So, you know, clearly goaltending wasn't Tampa's strong suit. Gibson had 42 wins and a 9-15. Demko with a 9-20. That is unbelievable. 41 wins as well. Let's go Carell. Kata's right there. Adam Fox had a season. 85 points and 77 hamburger helpers. That is ridiculous. Hamilton, 77. Again, really good. Hughes is up there, so I'm very happy with that. We got third. The Art Ross goes to Sidney Crosby, and it looks like he might have won the Rocket Richard with 57 goals. So he's getting the Art, probably the Heart, and the Rocket Richard. Let's see. Yeah. No one was even close. Robertson had 46. Sydney, what a year. Oh no, we're facing him in round one. Oh, that's, that's not good. Who else does the Buffalo Sabres have? They have Tarasenko and they also got Burakovsky. All right, so two snipers playing with Crosby and Crosby was the one getting all the goals. We've also got Sagan playing with Tuck and Jones. That's a good second line. Beniers, Soup, and Sanford. It was a really good third line. I mean, Sanford... I take that back. It still is an amazing third line. Me personally, I would prefer Carlson to be on that line, but I guess they wanted to spread the wealth a little bit. They've also got Slavin on defense, loaded with ability. Severson is his partner. Yeah, their defensive core isn't great. And in net, they got Swayman. Okay. So it's a good team. It is a good team, but you know what? I think we're better. Let's see if NHL 23 agrees with me. Sim past the first three games. That is not a good start. Okay. Beautiful. Sim, one more game here. It's not a best of three because we have three. Easy. Light work. The Ottawa Senators. This feels like really similar to the last draft for some reason. Oh my word. They've got Forsberg, Duchesne, and Cooch as their first line. Is that even legal? Like, can we get a check here? Not to mention their second line. They've got Bo Horvat playing with Domi and Farabee. How did this even happen? Defensively, oh, that's how it happened. Okay, it makes sense now. Demko's good. I mean, he's the one with the 920, right? Well, guess what, Ottawa? Your time is done. They went to seven in round one. They're tired. Let's just make it easy. How about that? Okay, let's win this one and make it a best of three at least. Beautiful. Whose back is going to be against the wall? Not ours. Don't push a game seven. They did it. I don't believe you. We're here. We're live. We are the Montreal Canadiens. Taking on the Ottawa Senators and Philip Forsberg buries one on our netminder a little too early there. I mean, maybe not. You know, it's decently into the game. Not a lot of shots yet. Okay, so... That's how it's going to be. Horvat scores to start the second. Okay, it's done. Yeah, I don't think we stand a chance here. We're going to have to have a monumental comeback. I'm just simming. We're out. What a pathetic showing. We kind of started to come back, but not really. It will be the Colorado Avalanche winning the Stanley Cup. Hartford with the Calder. Let's go look at some playoff stats. Let's go look at some awards. And let's go check out that playoff tree. Nas led once again 13 points. Troy Terry had 12. Skinner with 11 and 7 tucks. So I'm down. That's pretty good. Did Hart get lit up? Uh, 907. That's not too bad. Igor had his guy at 930. 14, 3, and 2? Now that is impressive. Dougie Hamilton had 20 points in 19 games as a defenseman. 
really good. Girard, 18 and 19. Lindholm also did well. A 28% shooting percentage for Miko Rantanen, who had 24 points in 16 games. Claude Giroux will be your Conn Smythe winner, having 13 goals, 17 assists, and 30 points in 22 playoff games. He also had four game-winning goals, which, you know, I would say... He had 13 goals, so, you know, whatever. But Rantanen had 14 goals and only one game winner. Team awards, we're pretty familiar with. There you go. Individually, Sydney. Sydney. Adam Fox gets the Norris. Petterson with the Lady Bing. Shane Wright gets the Calder. Giroux, as we saw, Conn Smythe winner. Georgiev with the Vesna and the Jennings. We've got Mata taking home the Masterton. Nighty with the Jack Adams. Adam. Sydney the Kidney also gets the Selkie and the Lindsay and the Rocky Richard. Call this man a janitor because he is cleaning up the award show. Your playoff tree, the Avs only struggled in round one. Went to seven. They just incrementally got better. Went seven, six, five, and then a sweep in the finals against the Pens. They finished seventh during the season. They had Giroux, Ovi, and Patches. And then they have Blake Lazat playing with Suzuki and Rudolph's Balsers. Good old Rudolph's. Anders Lee on the third line. Yeah, this is a good team. Shesterkin in net too, like, how? Well, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have other video or draft ideas, be sure to let me know. And just appreciate you. If you could like, and you don't have to, but subscribing would be kind of fire. Just saying, just throwing that out there, you know? Uh, but yeah, hopefully I get the new lights soon and we have a cool setup. But for now, it is just plain. It is what it is. C'est la vie. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you soon.